Hello Mavericks, I'm back with the next poem of Standard 10th, Fire and Ice, presented by Robert Frost. It is a wonderful poem containing a wonderful message for the present generation. One of the most renowned poets of American history, Mr. Robert Frost, was born in San Francisco, California on 26 March 1874 and he died in 1963, 29 January, in Boston, Massachusetts. This poet is known for his simplistic language to present his re realistic poems. And so, he received four Pulitzer Prizes all through his career for his poems. And all his poetries contained amazing meanings in them. This poem, Fire and Ice, is a popular poem written and published in 1920, shortly after World War I, and weighs up the probability of two differing apocalyptic scenarios presented by the elements of the poem's title. The speaker believes fire to be the more likely world ender of the two and links it directly with what he or she has tasted of desire. And the poet knows that ice could be equally a powerful destructive force to end this world, as he has compared ice to hatred. Despite its light and conversational tone, Fire and Ice is a bleak poem that highlights human beings' talent for self-destruction. The poem is a kind of writing about the end of the world and poses two possible causes for this end, fire and ice. The speaker uses these natural elements as symbols for desire and hatred respectively, arguing that both emotions left unchecked have the capacity to destroy civilization itself. I would also like to inform my students that there are two reported inspirations for this poem. The first of these is Dante's Inferno, which is a poetic and literary journal into hell written in the 14th century. And the other is a reported conversation Frost had with an astronomer in which they talked about the sun exploding or the earth freezing. The opening two lines of fire and ice establish two important aspects of the overall poem. Firstly, they make it clear that this poem is a work, is a kind of writing about the end of the world. Secondly, they establish the poem's conversational tone which is deliberately a little at odds with the gravity of the subject matter. In the beginning, the poet considers whether fire or ice will bring about the end of the world. At this early stage in the poem, the symbolic meaning of these two elements is not yet apparent. Indeed, the speaker talks in a very simple language almost as if gossiping about someone or something, like he says, some says. This is all about attracting the reader into a false sense of security before the poem unleashes the disarming depth of its thoughts. At this early stage of the poem, these two elements could easily relate to a natural disaster. For example, a potential world-ending fire could be something like the asteroids that most likely destroyed the dinosaurs. And ice could relate to the future ice age or the extinguishment of the sun. I will quickly summarize this short poem by Mr. Frost. As he weighs up two different scenarios for the end of the world, some people think the world will end in fire, whereas others think ice is more likely. Based on the speaker's experiences with desire, he or she tends to agree with those who believe 
fire a more likely scenario if the world were to end twice however the speaker feels that based on his or her knowledge of human hatred ice would be an equally powerful method of destruction and would do the job sufficiently now is the time for the poetic devices used in the poem the first one is enjambment this is a figure of speech which means the continuation of a sentence without a pause in more than a line in the poem like in this poem we find the last three lines an example of enjambment to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice the next figure of speech is alliteration which means the repetition of same consonant sound in more than a word in a given sentence like in the beginning of the poem we find some say it's the repetition of s sound and in the same line we find world will which is the repetition of w sound w sound and also in the insert we can see favor fire which is a repetition of f sound all these are the examples of alliteration the next figure of speech used is consonants consonants is a figure of speech which is a repetition of same consonant sound in the middle of the word or in the beginning of the word for example in that particular line with those it ends with the sound starts with the sound that's an example of consonants the next figure of speech is assonance which is a repetition of vowel sounds in consecutive words like in the first line we see the repetition of i sound in will end in fire also in the line i think i know enough of hate in this i think i contains the repetition of i sound and no enough of contains the repetition of o sound that's an example of assonance it's followed by anaphora anaphora is a figure of speech which talks about the repetition of same words or same phrases to begin consecutive lines like in the first and the second line we find the same phrase beginning the sentences some says the world will end in fire some says in ice so this some says is example of anaphora lastly we will see the rhyming scheme of the poem well the rhyming scheme talks about the rhyme created by the last word of every line like we see fire desire and fire rhyme with each other so they are marked a while the ice in second line is a different sound so it's marked b making the first paragraph rhyme scheme as a b a a then we move to the second paragraph which starts with twice which matches with ice so it's marked b again we have hate which is very different from a and b so we mark it c the next line is ice and the last line suffice matches with twice so they are marked b and the second last line is great which matches with hate so it's marked c making the rhyming scheme of second paragraph as b c b c b now let us quickly take the symbolic meaning of the poem that is actually the need of the r well the poet has tried to symbolize fire as passion and greed the greed of human human beings which never likes to end and ice is a symbol for hatred because of which people are killing each other and which will eventually lead to the end of this world well there is a very strong message in this fire and ice and the message says that it is our greed our indifference and our coldness that might make the humanity end on this earth 
So if you really want to survive, which I feel is the need of the hour, we need to think and we need to analyze what we are doing and what we need to do. Well, here I end up with the description and summary and whatever I wanted to say. Hope you enjoyed my efforts. If yes, like and share and subscribe because subscription is my booster. Thank you very much for your patience. Have a nice life ahead.